Hi, this is Adi, and today I'm having a look at Mastermind Creations R03 Bovis, which is the second widely available figure from the reformatted line. The first two figures carried the same uh, designation, R01. They were kind of variants. There was Terminus Hexatron and the Supernova version. So what happened to R02, I'm not entirely sure. I'm guessing it was the upcoming dive bomb from uh, Feral Rex but something along the way has caused them to go a little bit out of sequence. I don't care because I love this figure, so let's have a closer look at this box. This is another window style box, just like the Terminus Hexatron was. You can see I've pulled it out here, and it's an artwork in itself. Uh, it must cost quite a bit to produce these thick high grade boxes with the nice quality insert in the middle. The artwork is nice, the graphics are nice, nice pictures of the figure inside even some sort of glossy glossy uh, silver on the outside there so at the price point hundred plus dollars uh, it's kind of satisfying to get a display box on the inside we have a full color instruction manual that's that end on the other end if you flip it over it's a bit of a comic so I don't really care for the, the comic, I know who Predacons are, but a lot of effort has gone into this and it looks really fantastic. So there's no shortcuts here. Uh, Mastermind Creations are really shaping up to be one of my favorite groups. Let's give you a bit of a look at the instructions. So very, very clear, very easy to understand. Um, a lot of effort has gone into this and there's feral rex the final combined form which we can't make yet everyone's looking forward to as well as that we get this beautiful credit card piece of artwork collector card with the tech spec bio on the back the way that he looks is they they couldn't have pulled it better from my imagination you know he's an updated version with such character, poseability, kind of durability, and just build quality that I, I can't get over it. Now, I said it in the Terminus Hexatron review, I can't understand how uh, Mastermind are doing such fantastic figures, and it wasn't a one-off. This figure is uh, at least as good as Hexatron, and as far as the characterfulness of the design goes i think that it's even better and that's really amazing because tantrum was my very least favorite predacon and perhaps one of my all-time least favorite decepticons in robot mode and you can see here i've got the 2010 uh, diecast version from takara and i've got the original it's all chewed up back in my toy box but uh, this is a dumb looking figure and quite ugly like the shoulders are really ridiculous the hands aren't standalone pieces the legs are stuck together and don't bend at all so g1 tantrum was real piece of shit but uh, at least in robot mode but this guy is is nothing like that whatsoever he is super articulated let's cover a bit of that articulation starting with the head i mean he hasn't got a long neck and i don't think there's a ball joint in there so it's not going to ever be um, one of those super poseable heads. But the reason for that, I think, is the huge bull skull attached onto the back of his robot head. Now, they've gone and put a special joint in there which deliberately, I think, introduces this wiggle room. And you've got kind of wiggle room backwards and forwards, side to side, to give it a bit of character, but uh, no wide range. We do have that rotation, and the bull horns are separate pieces that can go backwards and forwards. So if you like them to poke down like that, or straight up in the air, you've got that choice. They're a little bit more bendy than the rest of the plastic, so they don't feel like they're gonna snap as easily. The shoulder is on a ball joint, but apart from that ball joint, it's on another pivot up here, so that gives us the outwards range of motion, but also allows more clearance to form for the ball, so you do get a decent range. It can spin the whole way around like that. We've got a swivel at the bicep and a double jointed bicep so you can see the two can you it's two pins in there hang on focus double jointed now we do get more range if you bend this back that's actually part of transformation and once you do that you've got like 
it can like that's 180 degrees basically it can bend right back on itself this skirt armor is on little balls here and for transformation it moves much like the hexatron uh, waist holsters now these parts I don't think actually serve any transformation purpose they're purely aesthetic and it's only in third party I think that we can get uh, totally extra bits which serve no other use than to look cool and that is cool I like that at the hips we've got a very weakly ratcheted backwards and forwards I think you can hear it in there and again a very weakly ratcheted in and out I say weak but it serves its purpose that's no great uh, criticism of it and I think if it was stronger for no reason I mean it would just make the toy harder to use it can hold its weight if you look at it out like this so that was the knee not the hip the the figure isn't in any danger of just flopping over from lack of ratcheting we have a swivel in the thigh and a nicely ratcheted knee joint now when we get down to the feet this is one of the only parts of the toy that I think is going to be problematic so we've got this set up here, swing arm with a pivot here and a ball joint. And this is done this way because it kind of allows some clearance for transformation. Uh, we do get this bend at the toe as well. But I find that for balancing the figure, you often have to kind of do that to give it a little bit of a forward tilt in the posture, especially when you're going to put the big gun on the back. And that forward tilt is held up by friction of the ball joint. So I'm guessing that over time, look at that, it's on one foot, pretty good. I'm guessing that over time that ball joint's going to loosen and it may become a little bit hard to balance him when he's holding the big gun. But that's a very minor complaint and just putting a little bit of something under him would easily fix that on display. We get several weapons. Two of the weapons are these identical, uh, I don't know what to call them. Uh, they're stabbing weapons with a kind of hilt that has all these spikes on them. These are actually painted, so there's a... Uh, creamy colored plastic here with silver painted spikes all along the edge and the blade going up to the end is silver as well now you can see them there how I've mounted them in the little holes here there are holes on the back uh, sides rather this transforms to the back if you want that can mount these in a kind of hilt configuration as well but it's not attached to the hilt piece up here and there there are no plugs in the hilt to plug them into these can be held in the hand um, I find it stressful, not so much on the hand, but on the handle of the sword to put it in there. I don't think that I'm going to do that on my display, and I'm not going to show it on the video, and I'll show you the reason I'm not going to show it. Now, if you look at this piece, I'm not sure if that's coming out on the camera, but right about here, the handle is actually three quarters of the way broken off. And that's not from putting it into the robot's hand, although it could very easily have occurred that way. That's from, I just grabbed this to get it out of the tray and it was stuck really uh, too securely into the tray. And the force of me pulling it by that handle almost snapped it off. Now, probably should grab it by this butt end to pull it out of the tray because it, it does stick in there pretty tight. But I'm not risking these any further. I like the way they look and they're fine on the forearms for me. The next weapons we get are these two blasters, which look the same. And they look like black plastic, but it's actually a black plastic base um, with a kind of sparkly gunmetal paint painted over the top of it. And they're really nice. They're not oversized, they're just a nice sized pistol. And sometimes I think Transformer guns for the, the small arms that they carry in their hands get a bit oversized these days. And I like the way that this guy has got his small weapons and a separate really huge weapon if you want it. And here is that weapon. And this is a freaking huge weapon. This is the foot and fist in here of Predator King. So that's what this massive chunk of plastic is for. But it also looks great as a gun. You can see the details here painted on silver. Silver painted on these stripes at the front. Uh, where's my G1? If you look at the G1, they were actually shiny stickers. And this is much bigger than that, but it takes a lot of cues from there. A lot of cues on this front part. I mean, if you remember, you could buy a Crazy Devi upgrade that made this look a little bit more like that. Um, it's really, really nice. On the back of Bovis, you can see these little slots and some more little slots on the back of this gun. And that's a, a friction 
joint basically that if you just push the slots together it hangs on now here's where you get a bit of balance he wants to fall over like that now it's asking quite a bit for him any figure really to balance with this huge gun on the back but this is where it comes into play that you can lean him forward a bit on those ball joints on his feet and with that forward leaning he can look good holding the gun now I don't mind that he has to lean forward to hold that I think anybody carrying such a huge thing on the back would be leaning forward so it's not really a fault with the figure it's just a natural pose to be in when you're doing that I just hope that over time it, it doesn't lose the ability to do that we can also mount the gun in this amazing cannon mode and surprisingly he balances just fine holding that up now you can't stick his arms outstretched because the elbow joints aren't quite tough enough but if you if you lean it on his abdomen there he has no problems holding that pose uh, i forgot to mention in the posability that the wrists also swivel so you can keep his arms in a good position just swivel the wrists to grab onto those handles at the side So I'm going to go ahead now and transform him. So to do that, flip up the face like this. Then we need to just get his arms all straightened out. Make sure these hands are facing in the forward direction and fold the hands into the forearms. Now, be a little bit cautious. The fingers are thin and if you're going to yank them in and they snag here, you might snap the fingers off. The next thing we want to do is these feet are really strongly tabbed into the back so just put your finger up here and untab it like that and that's one of the really quality parts of this figure everything tabs in there's nothing just loose flying around looking bad it all has a place to go then uh, what are we going to do now fold these shoulder panels sideways like that and that will give you enough clearance to just bend the forearms and they tab in little tab at the side there do both leaving this part here free to kind of lock them in place so it has a little slot in there and if you can just get it in it will join on like that do the same on both sides and again it being there kind of locks this and stops it from unraveling now let's twist the hoof around twist the other hoof around uh, move these lower legs around like that and turn the head around so that's basically the front half of Bovis ready to go looking at Bovis from the back we want to get the side panels on his thighs and twist them until they face backwards like this and then rotate the whole body around while still kind of maintaining those little skirt pieces in the middle like so and I find that for transformation they're kind of best left flat like that next I want to untab this whole module and it doesn't come far away just separates a little bit like that it does require quite a bit of force sometimes just to loosen it up and that gives us the freedom to kind of get it out of the way when we need to and that is so we can do this swing this panel open now an important kind of word of warning here this point is pointy very pointy and later when you squeeze the parts together if you put your thumb here and squeeze you're going to stick this point right into your thumb and it hurts bend these animal legs out they are tabbed in quite hard there sometimes but once you've got it untabbed it kind of retabs on the other side do the same over here untab it and then just tab it back in the other way now this is the trickiest part of the whole transformation. So we've got this open already and we're kind of, I don't know, I'll try to show it. I don't know how to describe this, but we want to flip it around like that, right? Words can't say, you just have to get the knack of it. And here's the part, that tabs in. Tab it in by squeezing here. Don't squeeze it here because of that pointy bit so let's do the other side uh, it's a bit tricky you know, it's always tempting to just kind of force it 
but I don't want to break it. So there's a there's a sweet spot, and even myself, I'm not 100% sure where it is. But once you get it, it will move into the right position. That just leaves us with having to fold everything up in on itself, like the the thighs into the lower legs. The lower legs will tab together. You can flip these panels shut on the inside. Give it a bit of a squeeze. Put the legs in a nice position. Rotate. Hang on. Rotate the legs till they're facing forward in a kind of animal way. Like that. And that's essentially it. Fold these down. That's his bull mode. He looks pretty good. Certain angles look better. Like I find dead on from the side, he looks like a bit of a fatty. He's not uh, not too bull-like there. I mean, this this bit down here, it's like he's had a bit too much to eat. But uh, if you have a three quarters pose, doesn't look that way. It just kind of looks tough. It looks like he's stamping his feet into the ground. He's got a nice bit of shiny yellow eye in there. A bit of a sparkle to the yellow in that. His mouth, as you can see, does open and close. Now that's not the head flap. You, you can see the head if you open the mouth, but it's not the same flap that the head is on. So you can get kind of small amount of motion there. His head bends down, so if you want to have him charging someone, you can bend his head down like that. All in all, very cool looking figure. With the G1, he's about the same height, but much wider, much heavier. Now, the G1 did look better to me in this mode than the robot mode, but it always annoyed me that he had these really smoothly rounded off spikes. I don't know if the original Japanese one had that, but my toy one as a kid had that, and this reissue has that, and that's kind of stupid. This guy, a little bit rounded off, but still much more pointy. The G1 has kind of more silver, but that's in the form of stickers. Bovis has a bit of silver paint here and there, and especially the chest panel. I mean, this, all this detailing from the robot chest, the grid here and the red, this is all paint. The paintwork is done particularly well, and from the photos that I had seen before I got the figure, I thought that was molded differences. It may, it may well be, but it's, it's still painted. So the paint is very good quality, where the sticker detail was on the original. To join the huge cannon onto the back in this mode is pretty straightforward. So these little bumps here are a kind of guide as to where it should end up. Uh, there's a little tab at the bottom here. Now I found it doesn't grasp too securely, but if you just give it a squeeze, it does sit there and its own weight kind of holds it on, but it is not super strong. It doesn't bond there or anything, but given that this figure has to stand on four legs, uh, I don't think it's going to tip off. Like you can see that if I vibrate it a bit, it's going to come off. I've seen alternate ways of doing this, but uh, like putting this around like this and flipping these over so that he stands with the solid attachment on the back so that you can do this. I don't really like the way that that looks. I like it to sit back uh, towards the back end of the figure more, so I think I like it the other way. The final mode to show Bovis in is leg mode. Look at that, very big. To show you exactly how big, We've got this, it's running at about seven inches up to the top of his skull there. So that's, I don't know, 17 and a half, 18 centimeters. It's pretty big. I'm guessing that uh, Feral Rex is gonna have to be at around 40 centimeters tall, although that's just my guess. I haven't read any info, just going by how big this leg is. It's pretty huge. It's got a ball joint, feels pretty stiff. Seems like there's going to be good balance.
pretty nice. Now, along with that, this part pops out of that cannon, and this is Feral Rex's fist. So he's got articulated fingers. Each finger has two points of articulation, as well as the thumb. It's a very nice fist. Probably one of the best fists. It's much better than the um, Uranus fist that I've got, uh, because the more articulation and it looks better. Maybe even a little bit better than Hercules, although I feel like it's a tad smaller. My final thoughts on Bovis. Bovis is amazing. I love this figure. So you can see I've got Trail Cutter here. I like Trail Cutter. I've got two of these, one on the card as well. I mean, I wouldn't have done that if I don't like it. But listen to this. It's like a, a rattling loose hollow thing compared to Bovis. Bovis is a dense, strong, really nicely engineered figure. If I had to pick how my figures would be, it would be like this figure. Now, I like also his size. So not every figure needs to be as big, obviously. Autobots should be smaller than Decepticons, and I like the way that he can sort of look down on some of my Autobots that I do like. Uh, Hasbro have been going in the right direction with figures like this. I mean, this looks pretty nice. He's got nice detailing on him, nice face, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I don't think there's anything on the market at the moment that is really comparing with what Mastermind Creations are doing. This is like an ultimate version of Bovis. There's no place that I can find fault. And like just looking at the face, for example, you can see there that the, the visor is not just a piece of red plastic. It's a, a glittery, shiny paint over the top of the visor. The silver paint is done really nicely. It's, it's not chrome, uh, but it's a good silver. The areas where they could have skimmed, like on the gun, are actually painted dark grey over the top of black. So there isn't a place on this figure where they've just said, ah, oh, you know, screw it, it's too much money, let's cut that little cost and give something a little bit less. The whole figure, to me, feels like 100%. Nothing feels like it's going to break, and I want to play with it. It just looks awesome. It's great for taking pictures. The poses that you can get are... Uh, just amazing it's very uh, naturalistic posability it's 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 impressive on the shelf given its stature uh, it stacks up with tons of other third party really good it's about the same height as hegemon I didn't want to dig him out but I've seen some photos floating around where they sort of stand head to head and it's I'm happy I'm happy I've got it I can strongly recommend anybody else picking him up I think what I love about it maybe the most, is that it's just so much fun. Look at that. He can hold the cannon in his hand. That's not balanced there. That's in his hand, slung over his shoulder, like he's walking along, hefting this huge gun. That took thought to do that. It's not a coincidence. Mastermind must have put a lot of, um, a lot of uh, thinking into how this guy is going to look in photos, how he's going to pose, how he's going to use his accessories. It's, it's done really really well and although I do love what Masterpiece has been doing I've got uh, Prowl that I should review here soon and I've got the the other cars and MP10 and all that I love what they're doing with the look but what Mastermind have done is given the look that I want but it's tough enough to really play with like boom I don't care about that it's not going to snap I can do that nothing is going to break off this I feel a bit weird throwing maybe Prowl on the ground like that because I feel like maybe something would break, but uh, not so much on this figure. I feel like I can enjoy it more because of the durability. Anyway, I don't want to harp too much. I think you get the idea what I feel with this guy. So this is, what is it, R03 from the reformatted line, Bovis from Mastermind Creations. I'm Odean, and thanks for watching.